The results that I presented, they represent updated results from two separate phase one trials of a drug called entrectinib, which is an inhibitor of three, uh, excuse me, three different gene groups, but actually five proteins altogether, track A, B, and C, ROS1 and ALK. Um, and we presented combined both safety data and efficacy data for entrectinib. Um, for the safety data, it's a large experience now in 119 patients treated on both trials. Um, and we showed that uh, the drug was safe and well tolerated. There were really only two bad toxicities, which we call dose limiting toxicities. Um, but the majority of these side effects were really lower level in terms of their severity, so grade one or two. Um, and the most common ones were tiredness, a change in taste. Um, and also pins and needles um, either around the mouth or, you know, we call them paresthesias. Um, but probably the more exciting uh, portion of the presentation was the efficacy data. Um, and just to frame that, it was really in a subpopulation of patients, so 25 patients all together, that had gene rearrangements or gene fusions of any of the five genes, and track 1, 2, and 3, ROS1 or ALK. Um, and these were patients who had not gotten targeted therapy before, that's an important point. And if you look at the effectiveness of entrectinib in all 25 patients, um, about 80% of patients had a radiologic response or resist response to therapy. So impressive results, but I, more um, importantly, if you uh, frame them within the context of each of the three different groups, um, patients whose cancers had NTRAC fusions, um, even though there are only five of them that, that I presented at the conference, all five of them benefited from therapy clinically. So they had disease shrinkage um, and response via resist or a volumetric analysis uh, in many of them. So the patients that I treated also had accompanying improvements in quality of life. Um, so that was 100% in a small population. Um, for ROS1, the response rate was about 86%. And for ALK, the response rate was 57%. Um, so um, if you look to the experience with FDA-approved targeted therapies for ALK or ROS1, um, just to compare the response rate, it's in the ballpark of about 60 to 70%. Um, so comparable re results to what we already have available for patients, for ALK and ROS. Uh, but certainly, the fact that these track fusions were able to find in patients and they benefit substantially for therapy. That to me probably represents the most exciting subset that we reported on um, in this series. Standalone treatment, absolutely. Um, so for NTRAC, you know, there's nobody in the space that has an FDA or an approved drug with any regulatory agency. Um, so entrectinib stands to be a first-line, front-line therapy for patients with um, really any uh, advanced solid tumor that harbors an NTRAC fusion. Um, for the ROS1 space, like I mentioned, it really works best in patients who are treatment naive, so again, first line. And if you ask me how that compares to crizotinib, the drug is much more effective at penetrating the blood-brain barrier, so it's highly CNS penetrant. And the thought is that crizotinib, while it can get into the brain, doesn't get into the brain as effectively. Um, and so this may be a good first-line ROS1 option, um, especially for patients who either have existing brain metastases um, or who have a high propensity to have brain metastases. Um, and then the ALK space is crowded. You know, there th in the U.S., there are three FDA-approved therapies for ALK now. Um, and this drug seems to work best um, for patients who are treatment naive. So to me, I think the space for entrectinib will probably be in non-lung cancer patients that have an ALK fusion. So that's where I see the drug going. Yeah, so there are a few lessons I think that we can learn from this experience. Um, one, I would really advocate that we test for these fusions, specifically the NTRAC ones, um, because we've demonstrated that you can not only find them in patients' tumors, but now we have drugs that are active against these fusions, plus they're available now on clinical trials. So to answer your question, um, entrectinib is currently being explored in a phase two trial called Star Trek II that's taking that same population, ALK-ROS1 and TRAC fusion, but TKI treatment naive. 
Um, and so if you find these events, um, this is a global uh, multi-center study, and there's a, a center that's close to you, um, then I would absolutely send that patient because there's a high likelihood that the patient would benefit from treatment. Um, so that's where the drug is being explored now. Yeah, so um, we've learned that these uh, populations of patients that benefit from either immune therapy or targeted therapy, there's not a very huge intersection. So people think of immune therapy as a very exciting way or manner of approaching cancer therapy. But just speaking from the lung cancer experience, it seems like patients who are poised to benefit from an immune checkpoint inhibitor are patients who have a very strong or heavy history of smoking or those with a, a different alteration called the KRAS mutation. Um, and on the other hand, patients who benefit most from targeted therapy, EGFR, ALK, ROS, um, these are patients um, who have, in general, never smoking or minimal former smoking type lung cancers. Um, so um, this, I think, pulls everything together into what we call precision medicine. It's trying to figure out not just the best targeted therapy, but the best therapy in general be that immune therapy, targeted therapy um, for a patient based on their characteristics. I, I think most of it I'd said already uh, that these drugs are in development and that they can benefit patients. So um, I would make a plea for oncologists to test for these events, um, preferably with a broad platform. Um, but also I think that a challenge that uh, we're going to have to face eventually is that now we're dealing with smaller and smaller s uh, slices of the pie. Um, and so from a regulatory perspective, at some point we have to entertain the fact uh, that we might have to look at whether or not a targeted therapy can be approved for a particular target independent of what cancer the patient has. Um, and that absolutely has to happen when you get down to like 0 0.5, 0 0.3% events, assuming that the targeted therapeutic works across a broad variety of different tumors.